an old photo, my favorite. In the 1920s, almost all Japanese women wore kimono. They are classmates who graduated from a girls' high school in Kyoto. This is my mother. I love this, my mother. She looks happy and free. The place is called Arashiyama, west of the city of Kyoto, a most popular tourist and holiday resort. Over 60 years have passed. A pine tree, which was in the photo, has been cut down. Did my mother ever come back to Arashiyama? She died three years ago at the age of 80. I don't intend to say my mother's life was not happy and free. But her life wasn't as cheerful and peaceful as these people who are enjoying a party under cherry blossoms called Hanami. They enjoy Hanami everywhere in Japan, but Hanami is especially popular in Kyoto. I wonder if they value the short spring highly because Kyoto is surrounded by mountains and the summer's too hot and the winter's too cold. My mother loved flowers very much, but there were the flowers in our garden. She sometimes visited botanical gardens, but never enjoyed hanami with friends. From where did a life such as hers come? ね、主人の言う通り期間と承知しませんでした境ね。特にやっぱり京都っていうのはそういうことがあの厳しいというか。主人がそう気楽に京都表でもね、ちょっとこう何週間そういうふうに見直してはるようにせんと一気前なんだね。
which means the bedroom of eels. It is said Unagi no Nedoko shows how wise the people were. By pretending the house is small and they are poor, they avoided invasion by samurai who wanted to plunder the house. And it is true that taxes were levied according to the width of the front. The interior of Machia is totally dark. At the end of or in the middle of the building, there is a small garden called Tsuboniwa. It's very small, but every Tsuboniwa is miniature cosmos, which has a stone lantern, a wash basin, and garden stones representing mountains, rivers, and so on. Tsuboniwa also lets sunlight into the building. The upper floor is a little lighter. It is mainly a place for the man who is head of the family, and women called him Shujin, which means master. He had time and space for his hobbies. The heat in summer was made bearable by the wind, which blew through between the garden and the entrance. The cold in winter was unbearable, especially in the kitchen. The cold rose from the earth. Women pumped the water up. And they mopped the woodwork, floors, and tatami, the straw mats, every day with a wet dust cloth. It was an undeniable daily work in their lives. Strict cleanliness was most important. I can't stop remembering my mother's hands swollen by frostbite. It was natural to want to put your hands over the fire. Okudo-san is a kitchen range to boil rice, and it uses fire. You are requested to pay most careful attention when handling fire. It could destroy the whole fortune of the house. Be careful with fire, was stuck everywhere. Precious items were kept in Kura, a separate storehouse. The houses were divided from each other by only one wooden board. So, if a fire broke out in one house, it immediately spread to the neighbors. The family which caused the fire was severely punished. Wealth was highly valued. It was totally different from Edo, old name of Tokyo, where people were craftsmen who didn't live off their fortune, but live by their skill. Fire and fight were the flower of Edo. There are many temples and shrines in Kyoto. Every temple belongs to each school of Buddhism, and every shrine celebrates its own Japanese god. So there are many religious festivals in Kyoto. They are called Matsuri. Yasurai Matsuri is one of them. It is not held by a shrine, but all over the district. The people assembled in a temple and now are visiting the houses of the faithful to offer prayer and dance. Finally, they come to Imamiya Jinja, the shrine of Imamiya. The faithful want to be under the big red umbrella. They believe they can escape from bad diseases. The family of the house, which has been offered prayer and dance, gives some money to the parade and celebrates the god in prayer. How people were afraid of disease and disaster in Kyoto. Think of the construction of their houses. What a terrible place it was for disease. What a terrible place it was for fire. My mother and her friends, Shimada-san and Funatsuki-san, were living in such a place, Kyoto. 
少し昔話を聞きたいんですけどどんな感じだったんですか学校の頃は真面目なね、うんまあ、真面目な絵をかっさしてるなと思ってましたけどね意地悪なんかちょっとね内緒事やら言うたりちょっと、ね、とにかくねなんとも思わんと突き落てましたな私が<笑>あれは頑張り屋だったんですかねそうですわそれはもう気張り入りましたね気張りやしたわ、うん、勉強はもちろん頑張ってありました、うんはいうん将来例えばねあの頃だとやっぱりその結婚しないで何か仕事を持つなんてことは夢にも考えられない時代ですかそうですね、うん、私らそんなことは考えたことはないですね,ねお母さんも考えてへんやったん違いますか、うん、もう自分は一人一人娘だからもうしようがないと思ってましたもうどんな言うてもあかんと思いました Twenty percent of girls from primary school entered high school at that time all these girls graduated Did a two-year course and got their teacher's license. Nevertheless, their way of thinking about marriage and the life of women was no different from the feudal Edo era. Women should obey their parents in childhood, their husbands in married life, and their sons when they are old. Sanju no shie, the teaching of the three obediences. In those days, an arranged marriage started by exchanging photos and still does today. This is my mother's photo for her arranged marriage. I don't know how my mother's marriage was arranged, but my mother got married to a government official who worked at an experimental fish farm in Seto Naikai. It was a little different from Shimada san and Funatsuki san, who got married in Kyoto. Did my mother ever think about the difference between her old life in Kyoto and her new life in Seto Naikai with brilliant sun and blue sea? I was born in 1932. According to Japanese custom, my mother gave birth to me in Kyoto, where she used to live. I was named Nagisa, which means a beach. And my first memory is of the sea. Shining and glittering behind pine trees. I was happy like a prince. We moved house according to where my father was working. I'm sitting on my father's handmade chair, surrounded by tulips and anemones, which were new in Japan at that time, and chocolates and children's books. But my fate was to change. My father suddenly died on the day I finished the first grade of the primary school. I had to leave Seto Naikai. My mother had to go back to Kyoto with me and my sister, who'd just been born. Mother was 33, which is said to be a bad year for women. My mother returned to the world of Machia, the traditional houses in Kyoto. I hated the darkness of Machia. And the fish on the dining table smelled badly. The house was built by my mother's father when he retired from being assistant station master in Kyoto. This is the upper floor. He was the only one left when we came here. He passed away one year later. This is the front of the house. Soon after we arrived here, my mother put the nameplate Nagisa Oshima on the gate post. It was very unusual to show the name of a six year old boy on the nameplate. The head of family was a special position of absolute power. Women couldn't take this position, so I was obliged to take it. I cursed my fate, which brought me back to Kyoto. Kyoto Gosho, Kyoto Imperial Palace. The structure is not original and it's in a different place. Tenno, the emperor, lived here from 794 to 1868. Kyoto was the capital of Japan. Then the emperor moved to Tokyo. Kyoto was called Heian Kyo, it meant the capital of peace. The town itself is designed like a castle. The whole town was neatly divided by the roads from east to west and from north to south. 
the imperial palace was put in the center of the north. And the houses of the imperial families, nobles and people, and markets and temples surrounded it. When you go to the north, you say you are going up. And when you go to the south, you go down. Kyoto is obsessed by this sense of up and down. This is the main gate of the imperial palace, Suzakumon, described in this picture scroll called Kitano Tenjin Engi, which is a national treasure. When Heian Kyo came into existence, rebellions in other areas were suppressed. For the first time central government was established, the emperor's power became dominant over the struggles of the nobles. Court culture blossomed in the palace. This scroll describes the most important novel, Genji Monogatari, the tale of Genji, written by Murasaki Shikibu in the 11th century. But the lives of ordinary people were constantly threatened by famine and disaster. Lajomon was the south gate of Heigankyo, corresponding to the main gate of the palace Suzakumon in the north. It was ruined very early on, and people were afraid because an ogre lived there. This story of the conquest of an ogre by a samurai is performed by Mibu Kyogen Theater, one of the popular entertainments born in the Edo era in Kyoto. At the beginning of Heian Kyo, there were two temples. Toji, the east temple, was east of Rajomon, the south gate, and the Saiji, the west temple, was west of Rajomon. Nothing of Rajomon and Saiji remains, except for stone monuments. Toji exists in almost the same shape and in the same place, although it's been rebuilt a few times. It attracts the faithful and many tourists. Its market once a month is full of people who want to buy bargains. It was forbidden in Heiankyo to build temples inside the city except Toji and Saiji because part of the purpose of moving the capital was to avoid the strong Buddhist influence in the old capital, Nara. But the nobles wanted to build temples to secure the afterlife, and the people's demand for help in their faith could not be ignored. So to begin with, temples were only built outside of Heiankyo. This is Inari Jinja, Inari Shrine, first a god for the rice crop, and now also a god of commerce. People firmly believed in the spirits of the dead at that time. So when an epidemic or earthquake happened, they thought it was someone's curse and enshrined him as a god. This describes how a minister was slandered, expelled, and died in anger. He became an evil spirit, and finally was enshrined as a god of study. This inferno is described in the same scroll, 
I'm wondering whether people believed they went down to hell when they died, or whether they felt this world itself was an inferno. The primary school I went to, Shichijo Primary School. Shichijo means Seventh Street. My district belonged to the south. If you say it up and down, it belonged down. The war against China had already started. Physical training was much valued in school, and boys who had muscular strength were dominant. I, who wore glasses at the age of 10, was not suitable for the times. The next year, Japan started a war against the United States and United Kingdom, the Second World War. I spent time reading books left by my father in the dark machia. I was crazy about Japanese history, especially samurai history. Oshima was a long established samurai family. I was very proud to belong to a samurai warrior family in wartime. The Heian era, which began with the establishment of Heian Kyo, lasted 400 years. At the end, the power of government was taken by samurai from the nobles. Two big samurai clans, Genji and Heike, both had a large number of samurai battles. Kyoto was a battlefield, and samurai had a lot of influence over the emperor and the court. Finally, victory went to the Genji clan, and Heike was ruined. The family master of Genji opened what is called Bakufu, a government of shogun in Kamakura, far from Kyoto. This is the beginning of the age of samurai, and also the beginning of the age of double power with the emperor in Kyoto and the shogun in Kamakura Bakufu. Kyoto started changing from being the center of power which flourished by collecting the wealth of the area through tax to a city which earns its living by commerce and manufacture run by the people themselves. This change took a long time. Special citizens called Machishu reconstructed Kyoto which was totally burnt out by the war in the 16th century. This is the basic stone of today's Kyoto. Every day, walking to my high school, I looked at the tower of Toji. Kyoto was frightened by the ominous threat of another holocaust. The bombing by the United States Air Force was destroying Japanese cities one by one. I'm standing on the roof of the school's swimming pool. As students, we were foolish enough to dig out the pool by ourselves. The pool had another purpose besides swimming, to keep water to put out fires in case of bombing. We heard later, Kyoto was one of the targets of the atomic bomb. But finally, there was no big bombing of Kyoto, and the war ended. The pool was left uncompleted. We were shocked by the defeat, which we had never imagined. We had no more energy left to do anything. But there was one thing I did, soon after hearing the voice of the emperor telling us of the ending of the war. It was to dig Tsuboniwa 
and take out a big pot. I had put my important books in it, but the books were flooded and could not be used anymore. Talking about tsuboniwa, I once planted sweet potatoes. How could sweet potatoes be raised in this small garden full of stones and no sunshine? But we ate the leaves of sweet potatoes. The shortage of food was very serious. My mother had to go to the farmers to buy rice or potatoes. There was not enough money. My mother took her kimonos out, brought them to the farmer, and asked to exchange them for rice. At that time, a bride in Kyoto got married with enough kimonos to last her whole life. It was sad watching my mother's figure, soundlessly leaving the house with a package of kimonos. で、それを出してきてね、そこ I said before that it was citizens called Machishu who reconstructed Kyoto, which was burnt out by the long war at the end of Kamakura era. But there was heavy pressure on the citizens by the samurai class, that is, the governing class. Tokugawa, who was the final victor of the war, opened Bakufu, a shogun's government in Edo, old Tokyo. It's the beginning of the Tokugawa rule of 300 years. So there were the governments of shogun in Edo and Tenno, the emperor in Kyoto. The system of shared power remained the same. This is Rakuchu Rakugaizu a painting of Kyoto city and suburbs. At its heart is a parade of the emperor going to Nijo Castle, the center of power of Tokugawa in Kyoto, and it describes touring places and working people. Kyoto prospered. Under the rule of Tokugawa and other samurai, citizens saved money and created culture. There are many dramas in Mibu Kyogen Theatre, which started in Edo era in Kyoto, to teach wisdom and morality to the professionals and the citizens at the time. They are always spiced with a sense of humor and satire. This one shows the struggle between two merchants about the site of a shop. This is a lesson, how to knit a rope after catching a thief. This is against drunkenness. They are all played in silence. Why? I'm wondering if silence was respected among citizens or not.
This calligraphy was displayed in almost all the houses of merchants and manufacturers in Kyoto at that time, and still is now. Kanni, patience. This is the key idea of the philosopher Baigan Ishida. Shingaku, the philosophy of the heart. そうですね。なんかあんまりまあ、よその子とくちゃくちゃ言わんようにかまわんようにしてってね。本当やっぱまた Respect authority. Pay full attention to your neighbors. Don't cause friction. Be extremely careful with fire. Clean up everything beautifully and be patient for everything. Thus, beautiful Kyoto was formed. I was young. I couldn't be patient. Why must I be patient? Kyoto should be burnt down. I thought about a samurai hero, Nobunaga Oda. He burnt temples. If he had lived long enough, he could have burnt the whole of Kyoto. He was attacked by a betrayer in Kyoto and died. I wanted to be him. I wanted to burn Kyoto. To me, Kyoto seemed a symbol of old Japan. My mother started to work, getting a job in an office in Kyoto city when the war was over and my sister grown up enough. I didn't want my mother to work out of the home. Why must human beings work? I spent four years at Kyoto University in the backstage room of this dirty building, not attending the classroom of the Faculty of Law. This is called West Auditorium. I proposed a plan of reconstruction of this building to the university 40 years ago in the early 50s. But it wasn't accepted. It remained as it was in the 60s and 70s and became a mecca for the radical student movement. I spent every day here in a student movement and a student theater. In short, neither worked very well. I was a clumsy actor and had only one chance to direct. My opinions weren't accepted by the student movement, which was dominated by the Communist Party. I thought I'd go into any company or business which would take me, but nobody would. I took an examination to be assistant director of a film company, and I passed it. The studio was in Ofuna, near Tokyo. I felt relieved, thinking I could finally leave Kyoto but I felt I was expelled by stones. I never even thought about what my mother was feeling at that time. This is Chiongin, one of the biggest of many temples in Kyoto. Chiongin was established at the beginning of Kamakura era by a founder of New Buddhism who believed that the faith of people was important as opposed to the old Buddhism, which was protector of the state and men of power. But in Edo era, Chiyoin was strongly protected by the Tokugawa shogun family. The Buddhism of my family belongs to the school of Chiyoin, Jodo Shu. Jodo means a paradise, Shu means sect. My mother was trained in the way of Jodo Shu after her husband's death, and she herself was given a posthumous name as if she was dead. She had become a nun, 
though she didn't cut her hair. She never dreamt of a second marriage. Her attitude was proper for a Japanese woman at that time. I feel the Japanese family and the faith of Japan is very strange. The Buddhism of my mother's family belonged to Jodo Shinshu, which had this big cemetery where her parents were buried. Jodo Shinshu is different from Oshima's Jodo Shu, but Japanese women don't hesitate to belong to the sect of their husband's family when they get married. I always think about the difference in religion between Japanese and Western people when I go to Europe and see the tall church buildings. Western people think paradise is in the sky, but the Japanese think paradise is far away in the West. Japanese have long wished Amida, the chief Buddha of this sect, would come and take them to Saiho Jodo, which means paradise West. Did my mother wish like that, I wonder? In this cemetery, high tombs are for soldiers. Are they embraced by the hand of Buddha in Saiho Jodo? <laughs> When I asked my mother's only brother, Yamamoto-san, he spoke out very frankly. I always thought she was a born Kyoto woman, but he said to me their family was not originally from Kyoto. She was a stranger in Kyoto. She was different from her friends, Shimada-san or Funatsuki-san. They were born Kyoto women. I don't think my mother automatically became a Kyoto woman. She had to work hard to be one. She had no option but to be a perfect Kyoto woman. It was the only way a woman could be respected in Kyoto. And she kept to that way all her life. I became a director five years after leaving Kyoto and got married the next year. When our first son was born, I asked my mother to leave Kyoto and to live with us because my wife was working as an actress. I don't know how she felt about it. Saying nothing, she came to my house and devoted the rest of her life to bringing up my two sons. When she became old, she sometimes joked she was deceived into being a nursemaid. Otherwise, she could have had a quiet life alone in Kyoto. A joke sometimes contains truth, and often terrible truth. She never left her home to enjoy herself. Once her eight friends met near my house. She went there, but soon left against the will of her friends to detain her. 
In her last years, she became weak and sometimes was in bad temper. Once or twice a year, she left home saying she would not come back. But she came back at the end of the day. She said if she wasn't there, the family would collapse. On my mother's deathbed, my wife apologized to her for the sacrifice she made. But she said, making a smile under painful breath, she did as she wanted. I know she could have had another life. She left behind the books she read at high school. Her favorite was written by a woman thinker who founded a school of liberal philosophy. She was cheerful, had a sense of humor, and enjoyed telling jokes. She never stopped smiling when she met a person, but she didn't live freely. She didn't live for herself. It's very sad for me. Why did she want to be a perfect Kyoto woman when she wasn't even born in Kyoto? She was forced by Kyoto, perhaps. Kyoto had such a power. 38 years have passed since I left Kyoto, which I hated very much. I realized lots of things in me were formed by Kyoto. My life, my work, my attitude to others, my aesthetics, and my kimono. I'm in a festival crowd, invited by my primary school friends. This is Matsuo Taisha, the big Matsuo shrine near Arashiyama, where this film started. It's a guardian god for different professions, especially famous as a god of sake making. I did Omiya Mairi to this shrine as a baby. Omiya Mairi is a ceremony on the 31st day after being born when your parents take you to a shrine and pray for the peaceful growth of their baby. The spirit of the god is being put into Mikoshi. Mikoshi is a sort of portable shrine. There are six mikoshi for the six districts of Matsuo Taisha. In order to carry mikoshi, you need physical strength and technique. I have never carried mikoshi on my shoulder. Mikoshi sails across Katra River on board a boat. It's the highlight of this festival.
Lunch is prepared for the men by their families on the riverside. Then they go back to their district after a ceremony. After visiting each district, Mikoshi gather at two otabisho towards evening. Otabisho means a traveling place or branch of a big shrine. The movement of our Mikoshi is getting stronger. Finally, I'm forced to carry Mikoshi by friends. The Otabisho is next door to my old primary school. The Mikoshi stay here for 21 days and then will be carried back to Matsuo Taisha. After putting a mikoshi into a building, people are going back to their homes with pleasant fatigue and excitement. Their families are waiting with relatives and friends invited for dinner. I am also invited. Yes, let's drink tonight. I am forgetting my mother who had never drunk even a drop of sake. <laughs> 